Hi, welcome back. In this video, I'll show you the Giant Studio Debugger, what it is and what it does. We'll start off at the GDN website for some documentation. Um, the Giant Studio is a new tool for creating, editing and debugging script mods. So it's made for editing and debugging script mods, not for the entire game. It works as an editor and a remote debugger because we'll be able to connect to a running game instance. Um, it interacts with the game state, so we'll be able to trigger things or activate things and provides you with information about the game state. Uh, so we'll see what's happening in the game itself. Possible use case scenarios to create or modify Lua and XML files. Um, nice, but we already have better tools to do that. Um, using breakpoints to see how scripts are executed, so we'll be able to halt the game um, and manually cycle through lines. Uh, investigate the past game state by looking through call stack or inspecting variables. So we'll be able to see what's happening in the memory of the game or um, where the game is executing uh, and seeing when and how variables change. I think I can show an example of that. And the live coding by writing script while the game is running. So we'll be able to write some custom Lua code and execute it in the game context while it's running. Okay. Um, there are a couple of configurations we're going to use. The first one, um, it's a, a new version because this is a little bit outdated. Um, we'll start off with an example mod. We have to extract them. And we'll remove the zip file for now so the game doesn't ac accidentally pick up on that one. Um, we'll need the name. I already opened Giant Studio, but I'm going to make a new project. Um, doesn't matter where we save it, it has to be away from the game files. Um, the pot will automatically be added. We'll have to check the other files, uh, the other folders if they're correct, because this one always corrects to 22, but it's 25. Also, the actual execution, executable file is in a different folder than the root path. Um, for the game source, I think I have the included game source from the Steam version here. I'll add that. Um, it's not matching the version, I think. I have an outdated version of something. Uh, anyway, it opened the script so we can see what they're actually doing in the mod itself. Um, and now we should be able to connect to our game. Uh, so let's try it. Uh, we can actually ask, we can actually see what um, the editor is asking of Steam to start the game with these um, attributes. So when you're not running the Steam version, you can actually pass these attributes to your game. You do the same thing. But the editor will do it for you. Okay, well that's starting. Um, let's look at what we can do. We can edit uh, Lua and XML file, so yeah, we can see them open. Um, it has syntax stuff, so it knows about some stuff. That's helpful uh, when you're discovering what's happening. for now. Okay. So now our game is open. Um, when we go back to our studio, it's already connected because we started uh, the game over here. So the output we see over here should already be our game output. Um, now let's start the game and include the mod that we have open over here. We can follow along with what load, what's loading in the game. And once we're over there, we'll be able, for example, in this code, to set breakpoints. And whenever the game is going to hit 
these points. Um, it should stop executing and wait for us to continue. Um, once we're stopped, also over here we'll have uh, the variable list where it's actually in memory, the global, just so just for the whole game, literally the whole game state is going to be in here and local are the variables where you are in the breakpoint, only in that variable scope. Um, we can add watches to certain variables, so if you know this variable is going to have value later on, you can already add it here and it will automatically show it. Once your debug point or anything in the code fills up the value, that's what watches are. This is still loading. We have some errors. Not all these things can be referenced, but the editor does know about them. I think. So I don't know why it doesn't work over here. We should be loaded. And hopefully while this is running, I'm going to remove this one and replace it. This, I think it might make a difference. Um, but anyway, we can't get back to our game. Because over here, um, the studio is passed because we've hit this check mark. Right now the game is passed, it's waiting for this command. So uh, what we could do is use the, the tools over here. We can do a step in. And this will move into the function where we were on. And now with F10, for example, we can move to the next command because F10 over here is our step over. Step over means execute the line where you're on and move to the next line. Um, the step into means move into the function that you're highlighting. So I can get at this line when I press F11, I will move into the function that is actually happening and I can move the code around over here. Um, while this is happening, I can open the variables and I can see everything that is happening in game. Um, so if I'm looking for something like production points, I should be able to find references to what's actually in game, but I don't think I have any. And while it's passed, I can't move back to it. So I'll continue the game for now. Try that out. That feels like it's... Let's add some production points. Now when we go back to the ed editor, because we don't um, have any breakpoints for now, we can just press pause and the game will be paused for us. And again, we can see the complete view of the memory. We're looking for the production points. So somewhere over here we should find references to what we just placed. Are we looking for any managers? A production chain manager. So, and because this is the, the in-memory of the game, I can just edit anything. And once we press play again, the new valuable value will be in memory. Um, I'm not sure where the production points are stored, actually. We'll skip it for now. Um, we'll try to get back to this code. Uh, we can. speed of time and then we should at least hit it in the hour mark there we are uh, now we have our code here um, so we have this we can also see our call stack where the code is halted right now we can also see that it's in our custom script, in our mod that we are creating. We actually can see some memory allocations. This is interesting if you want to optimize your mod. 
how much of the memory you're actually using. Um, same for this one. We have the breakpoints, all the red dots we have spotted where the code will automatically stop for us. Um, so now we're over here. Um, one thing I'd like to show is the script console. Uh, whatever code we, we print in here, we can press Control Enter. And this will have executed in game, as we can see when we unpause it, or here in the output, I can also see my script. Um, so I can actually see, for example, in here, we'll try to figure out what's in the item, if we can. And we see it's something, well, maybe the same thing. We should find in memory somewhere. No one can actually see what's in items. Is it this vehicle sale system? Over here. And these should be the items. The item I was working with should have an H. And it was this value. So this script is actually running in my editor, uh, in my running game in the background. Um, that means you can maybe write a, a loop to loop over all production points and fill every inventory until the max and just add it in when you want to try out um, what happens when the production points get filled or something. Um, so those are breakpoints. Um, I guess that's about it. We have breakpoints, we have passed the game, we saw some variables, uh, maybe some variable changes. Basically, it comes down to this. When I change this, I thought it was going to change color, but apparently it doesn't. I thought it was something about that. Um, that's what I think they mean with the variable changes. Normally, for when when over here something is happening, um, and it changes a variable over here, it should highlight it in red or in orange when it's changed. Um, so I think that was the last part. Um, any other? I think that's about it. Uh, you have the basic buttons for debugging, playing, stopping, uh, moving into, over, or out of. Um, yeah. All the basic stuff over here again we have some text editor stuff find and play stuff all, all basic because you actually you have to edit here when you really want to execute code in debug mode um it's the only way to directly execute the code in the game um but it works but i don't see many use cases where you would want to do that because it's mostly going to be easier to write your scripts away from the game and test them outside, maybe with another Lua compiler or anything. Um, and only import them when you need to and only write a, an adapter layer from Farming Simulator itself to your code. So I don't know why would you write your scripts over here. Um, but that's it. We have some view options for the different windows. Uh, this, these ones are nice. I like that they included it because I had some problems with it. Because I mainly edit the files in Visual Studio Code. Um, and they stopped working when I edit the files, I think, in a Linux container or something. Uh, and it took a while to figure out it was a line endings. So. Basically, I think that's the editor.